Welcome back, Joseph Kendo here. In the depths of the Arclay Mountains, the Spencer Mansion housed one of the secret research facilities of the Umbrella Corporation. The staff necessary to run their laboratories consisted of Umbrella researchers and guards, who resided in the guardhouse located on the property. This dormitory is an otherwise unassuming place. It had multiple rooms for its living quarters, a gallery exhibiting scientific lab equipment, and a recreation room for hosting events for its tenants. But underneath lies a lab with an aqua ring used for researching the alpha strain of the T-virus and its effects on aquatic life. However, on May 11, 1998, the dormitory and its residents would fall victim to the Epsilon strain of the T-virus that leaked in the underground laboratory located underneath the mansion, leading to a series of events that would unfold over the coming weeks. In July of 1998, Star's Alpha Team would be taking shelter inside the Spencer Mansion. After some exploration, one of the officers would find themselves traversing the halls of the guardhouse, in which they would find a miniature pistol in one of the recently occupied rooms. The first and only appearance of the self-defense gun is in Resident Evil Remake, where the player finds it on a desk inside room one of the dormitory. Upon taking and examining the self-defense gun, its description reads, a self-defense gun that fires 22 magnum rounds. One round has been fired already. This examination seems to point to the fate of one of the two researchers whose corpses reside in room one. One of these researchers, found to be named Robert, worked in the underground laboratory of the Spencer Mansion. Following the leak of the Epsilon strain of the T-virus, everyone on the grounds were placed under quarantine and were prohibited from leaving. As time went on and the situation worsened, staff began to experience the adverse effects of this strain of the virus. And as such, Robert and his friend's last moments were documented in a note found in the very same room as the self-defense gun. The note reads as follows. June 22nd, 1998. I had to do it. We ran from those things, helping each other to survive. But Robert started to show the symptoms. I had to do it. Those damn things are pure evil. There was no other way. He would have done the same if it were the other way around. After I put him out of his misery, I had to just leave him in the bathroom. Now, I'm probably the last one. I mean, how could this happen? I will never forgive myself for being a part of this project. Eventually, I'll get what's coming to me, though. There's no way to escape from this nut house. It's just a matter of time now. Everything's set. All I need is a little courage to get it done. And knowing that I'll leave many things undone is... is a regret beyond words. But this is better than just waiting to turn into one of them. Please understand. And at least... let me end my life as a person. There's a message on the back. Linda, please, forgive me. It would seem that in their trying time, these friends stuck together to the end. Sadly, Robert started his irreversible transformation, leaving his friend to have to put him out of his misery, and his tool of choice was the self-defense gun expending one round to end Robert's suffering, and then placing his corpse in the bathroom of room one, before then taking his own life. Initially, the self-defense gun would seem to be your run-of-the-mill Derringer, chambered in a mouse gun caliber. Its simple design is a double-barreled handgun with a high-polished stainless finish, slab-side barrels with the caliber marked on the side, and stag grips to complete this gun with a very unique look. However, the model seen in-game appears to be a hybrid of two different Derringers. It's a Remington Model 95 Derringer by frame, but it features a barrel with the slab side design heavily based on the American Derringer's Model 4. Speaking of the barrel, the aforementioned markings tell us that this gun is indeed chambered in 22 Magnum. It also brands this gun as a double Dillinger, which may be its fictional name, or simply a mistranslation of the word Derringer. 
While the concept of a Derringer goes all the way back to the 1850s, the type featured in Remake is based on the Remington Model 95's famous double-barreled design. This design incorporated a second barrel, doubling the capacity from one round to two, with both barrels flipping upward to reload the handgun, all while retaining the same compact size. These styles of Derringer have been popular for decades as concealed carry weapons because of their ease of use, extremely compact size, and light weight. Although, guns in this size are usually made in anemic calibers that aren't so popular for self-defense in this day and age. The performance of the self-defense gun in-game is particularly unique. As a weapon that's found with only a single shot, it's hard to be able to truly gauge its effectiveness. You could imagine that most players would expend this round on whatever enemy they stumbled upon soon after finding the gun, or dropping the handgun in the item box and just forgetting about it completely. But this unassuming 22 Magnum Derringer actually packs quite the punch. Having a damage stat that almost rivals Barry's Silver Serpent. The catch is while it is extremely powerful against most enemies, it cannot kill boss enemies in a single shot only being able to deal a massive amount of damage, forcing the player to equip another weapon to finish them off. Perhaps if we had the second shot, we'd be able to finish off some of the deadlier BOWs. The self-defense gun may have had a small presence in Resident Evil Remake, but it's the story behind this little derringer that left a big impact on perceptive players. Showing not only that a small, unassuming firearm can pack quite a punch and defend you from immediate danger, but also that some of the researchers directly involved with the creation of some of the purest forms of evil were still human. So, that's it for the self-defense gun, the tiniest handgun to grace Resident Evil, while also packing quite the punch. Be sure to check out the Kendo Gun Shop Instagram page at kendo.gunshop. If you'd like to help the Kendo Gun Shop expand its business past Raccoon City, share the video with your friends to help spread the word or feel free to leave us a tip over at our Patreon, link in the description. Make sure to leave us a comment on what guns from the series you'd like to see a video on next, and don't forget to come back and visit us at the gun shop for more content about the firearms of Resident Evil.